Hello, we are the GI Joe Bruins and our project is about strategies to combat antibiotic resistant genes or ARGs in stormwater. Our group consists of Albert, David, William, Karina, Shireen, myself, Charlotte, and Brian. So let's start off with what exactly is antibiotic resistance? This is the process in which bacteria develop defense mechanisms against antibiotics. Well, how does this happen? This can happen through two methods, vertical and horizontal gene transfer. Vertical gene transfer involves genetic material being passed down from parent to child organism, whereas horizontal gene transfer involves the same material being transferred laterally from organism to organism. The second method is extremely dangerous as bacteria can transfer these resistant genes to another, creating a domino effect once having been introduced to an environment. This can result in antibiotic resistance bacteria or ARBs for short, preserving and growing their population more effectively than bacteria without ARGs. Antibiotic resistance can be promoted by the presence of antibiotic residues, which continues this positive feedback cycle. And so resistance levels in stormwater can be linked to several sources. For example, agricultural use of antibiotics can in livestock and the application of manure can be linked to increased incidences of antibiotic resistant bacteria. As a result, runoff from agricultural areas is a source for antibiotic resistance in surface waters. Similarly, antibiotics and metabolites excreted by humans eventually reach wastewater treatment plants. The antibiotics that are not eliminated throughout the treatment process can be reintroduced into the environment which residual, with residual amounts reaching surface waters. With few mitigation efforts on the levels of resistance in the environment, antibiotic resistance is a threat to human health and modern medicine. As such, the removal of ARGs and ARBs in stormwater can help lower exposure to resistant pathogens and lower deaths caused by ARBs. There are three main types of BMPs or best management practices to remove ARGs in stormwater. Number one being constructed wetlands, which have many advantages such as being cost effective, they have a high removal rate of ARGs, and it's not advanced or unknown technology, so it's easy to use and maintain. The cons are that its efficiency is dependent on the age of the wetland, seasonality, and plant presence. And there is also a large land requirement making it unfavorable for urban areas. Biofilters are the next option, and their pros are that they suit urban landscapes. They're low cost, depending on the geomedia used. They remove many different types of contaminants, and they are low maintenance, making them sustainable long term. Their cons are that biofilter utilizes biochar. Um, biofilters utilizing biochar show decreased efficiency over time, and the durability of the biochar decreases in areas with freeze thaw cycles. So that's not an issue for LA, though, specifically. There is also potential for heavy metal contamination in the effluent. Lastly, permeable pavement is also a good alternative to impervious surfaces, so good for urban areas. Um, it removes many classes of pollutants and it can reduce runoff and improve groundwater recharge, therefore reducing the amount of curbs and storm sewers necessary. The cons are that its maintenance is very difficult as clogging is common, it has a lower durability than traditional pavement and a complex installation as it is still new technology so not many people are familiar with it and how to install it. Research has shown that different BMPs can effectively remove ARGs in stormwater. So um, for constructed wetlands, it has a removal efficiency of 45 to 95%. For biofilters, 38 to 99.8%, and permeable pavement, 39 to 98.6%. So um, the biofilters show the higher removal efficiency and are therefore the more, most promising BMP for removing ARGs. Um, and we also found that introducing geomedia to the biofilter systems can increase that removal efficiency even more. The three types of geomedia that we looked into are iron-based amendments, biochar, and zeolite. To give a brief description of each of these types of media, here we have the iron-based amendments, uh, such as serovalent iron powder and iron oxides that are added to the filter media. Uh, this media is derived from waste materials, such as iron fillings and water treatment residue. Uh, iron fillings use adsorption, coagulation, and activation to remove pathogens. And then we have biochar, which is a charcoal-like substance derived from the pyrolysis of biomass waste. 
There's several types of biochar, including wood and grass biochar that have different characteristics. Additionally, the temperature at which biochar is pyrolyzed is also alters its characteristics. And we looked into wood biochar in this project and considered a pyrolysis temperature of about 500 degrees Celsius. Uh, in terms of zeolite, this, geo, this media is composed of different minerals. Uh, this media is microporous and has high cation exchange capabilities. Uh, natural zeolite can be exchanged with other ions to alter its characteristics. And in this study, we considered copper exchange zeolite. When it comes to ARG removal, all three geomedias proved to be quite effective, having removal efficiencies greater than 80%. It is because they're so effective that it is more important to evaluate these geomedias based on their material properties rather than their removal efficiency. For example, metal zeolite and iron filings contain heavy metals, so there runs the risk of heavy metal toxicity in the effluent. So despite both zeolite and iron filings being highly effective and durable antimicrobials, the lack of long-term research on metal-based geomedias and the potential health risk of metal elution makes biochar more favorable. However, one strong argument can be made that metal-based geomedias are more resistant to fluctuating weather conditions than biochar. But in the proposed LA area, that is not a concern. Warm temperatures and intermittent dry wet periods are common in the LA area, so extreme weather conditions are not an issue. In fact, the consistent warm LA weather can actually increase the removal efficiency of biochar, making it an even more ideal candidate for our proposed site. On the right photo here, you can see the site that we choose to do an analysis for. It is uh, just one street, North Whitsett Street. And the land use classification is primarily single family development. We chose this because it actually has a nice area on the left side of the sidewalk and the right side, it has a whole median for us to do the biofilters on. Some assumptions we made is you can see the watershed delineation represented by the red rectangle. Uh, the first assumption is that water does not enter from the north of the red rectangle. The second assumption is that water that falls on the houses is routed to the front of the houses and the street. And then the third assumption is that water drains down the left and right side of the streets respectively. On the left side of the left photo, you can see the BMP locations being highlighted in the cloud. You can see where we're gonna put them on the sidewalk and on the right, there's the median there. Something important to note is that water actually will drain down primarily on the left side of the street just due to the water being routed from the houses to the front. So you're gonna to need to implement some cross gutters to make sure that we can fully utilize the median space on the right. So we use the modified rational method for our hydraulic drainage analysis. So the inputs that we use for the design storm for the 85th percentile are 1.16 inches and that was gotten from the LA Hydrology GIS website. We chose a 74% imperviousness and using GIS, we measured the area to be 4.5 acres. The outputs can be seen in the bottom left there. And in the photos, you can see just zoomed in the biofilter areas that we're going to be using with actual dimensions. And in the bottom right, you could see some calculations that we found using the drainage analysis for how much area would actually be required for the biofilters. Here you can see a 3D AutoCAD representation of our model for what would be implemented on the left side of the sidewalk. It's important to note that a model is not shown here for the median, but this model works just fine. It can just be scaled widthwise and lengthwise to fit into the median as the median design constraints are less limiting. The important things to note here is that the white translucent area shows the ponding depth. There will be vegetation on the top. The first layer will be the biochar and sand filter layer, which is where most of the ARG removal happens. Below that is the sand transition layer, and below that is the gravel drainage layer. It is also important to note that we needed to linearly scale up the dimensions used for biofilters and labs in order to meet the 85th percentile water quality design event with the limited surface area we had available for construction. Based on the removal calculations for the site we selected, we extracted an annual storm volume of around 163,000 feet cubed and an 85th percentile design storm volume of around 13,000 feet cubed as shown previously. 
using around a 10% error margin for the concentration values due to the sporadic nature of ARG concentration readings and also rounding, we resulted in a significant drop in ARG concentration by the time the effluent leaves the single cycle biofilter with around 200,000 gene copies per feet cubed using iron filling, around 45,000 gene copies per feet cubed using the standard biochar and around 8,000 gene copies per feet cubed using zeolite. We got identical results for both the annual and the 85th percentile design score. Overall, a sand-based biofilter can produce at least an 80% efficiency in removing IRGs from the stormwater, uh, but having different combinations of geomedia can further improve the efficiency. Uh, we ended up choosing biochar as a filling because it works great with our less climate and that it doesn't pose any health concerns. Uh, we do recognize that many issues can exist, such as bacterial runoff from the compost, clogging of the biofiltration system, and chemical weathering of biochar. In conclusion, we weren't able to find a lot of large-scale implementations, but we took what's already been proven and verified in labs and designed our own biofilter off of it. Uh, still, many issues can occur with this approach, and we think analyzing and quantifying those issues can be one of the future research directions.